Hello YouTube, this is Brent Time from Team Lucky 7 Gaming and today I got a new video for you. This is to go over the open broadcaster software and you know, let's get right into it. So, this software is completely free. As it's said in the title, it's open broadcaster software. The open mean free, not open source of course. Um, so let's, uh, let's sort of delve into this uh, with me, I guess, and I'll delve with you. So, you get the software by going to obsproject.com hitting the download button and you'll download the newest version if you do need help further than this tutorial will provide please go to their forums which are right here or you can tweet Facebook you know all that such so let's go ahead and close that alright so the next part is you're gonna have to download it and open up the uh, software which is open here I'm actually recording with it so now we're gonna get a little inception window uh, we'll move to settings right away so in general settings you're obviously going to want it on English or whatever the preferred language you have and then you're going to have to move in coding. Now quality balance I've set to 7. A lot of other people set it in varying uh, levels. I think 7 is perfect. I don't think it gets much better other than that. Uh, so yeah. Then you're going to want to uh, determine your max bitrate. Your max bitrate has to do with your download but you do need a good upload to stream. Uh, has to do with your upload but you still need a good download. Now to test mine, I go to testmine.net. A lot of people do speedtest.net, but they're completely inaccurate due to the fact that they're uh, flash based and not actual determining your upload. And how I did it is I hit select text size, I hit 33 megabytes, and found out that where, Com where Comcast says I have an 11 megabyte upload, I actually have a 7.8 megabyte upload in actuality. And that's testmine.net. Both links in the description below boys and girls alright so after that uh, after you determine that which if it's higher uh, it's, if you're high enough to do 3300 don't go above it because the quality doesn't change also when you're factoring in your bitrate do factor in whatever audio bitrate you use because that actually does affect it alright next we're gonna move to broadcast settings alright now in this you're gonna have to hit live stream I'm doing file output because I'm recording but you're gonna have to hit live stream. And when you ha hit live stream, if you're streaming to Twitch, you're gonna have to get a key. Now that key is gonna be, I'm gonna have a link in the description below. As long as you're signed in and you go to Twitch, I'm gonna type it in, but I'm not gonna go to it. Dot TV slash broadcast, and then not the dashboard. That's it. Then you're there. That's it. There'll be a key there, hit show key, blah, blah, blah. Actually, you know what? I forgot, I can go to it. Let's do it right now. Twitch tv slash broadcast oh I spelled that wrong and there you go and then you just hit show key and then you're good that's all you gotta do for that right, let's go ahead and minimize that again and now we'll move to video now you're gonna have to set what you want your video resolution to be 1280 by 720 is 720p 640 by 480 is 480p so on and so forth that's that's how it works you probably can just search it um, if you want 1080p the maximum resolution that I would assume that you can go go 1920 by 1080 but it does take a good bit of system resources and honestly 720 true 720p looks just as good as the 1080p that is streamed to twitch now next you're gonna have to set your FPS the best looking thing is 60 FPS never go above it because the eye obviously can't tell above 60 FPS uh, Honestly, a lot of streamers go 30 or 25, depending on their PC. I stream 60, 45, it varies depending on the game. If it's a really demanding game, I'll stream 45. It, if it's not highly demanding, uh, let's compare Crisis to Battlefield 3. Battlefield 3 is not as uh, demanding, I'll stream 60. And that's basically how that works. Next, this is your audio settings. Now, you're going to want a good mic. You don't want a shitty mic because you don't want to sound bad. And that's going to determine which your bitrate and the actual mic you have. Um, next, you're going to have to say, well, you know what mic you're going to use. You know, your headset, your uh, condenser, such as me, in my case. And that's really all you got to do there. If it's really quiet, you can boost it with the, uh, the audio thing right here. Yeah. Alright, next you're going to want to click use multi-thread optimizations. Basically that means as long as you have like a dual core or quad core and all that stuff, it'll actually make use of the fact that you have multiple threads uh, in your uh, processor. 
You want to set it to high because you want the task manager to allocate RAM, CPU, and all that stuff uh, as a high priority task, um, as well as your game. And then next is the big part. This is going to determine on your PC uh, CPU specs. Okay. Now I have an eight core and I have a really fast internet, so I can sort of just make it neutral, um, or I could, I honestly could go a lot slower. Uh, because of how fast my internet is and I set it on faster because I want my PC I have an 8 core processor PC um, and I th and I know it can handle it so I put it on faster just to make sure it pushes the uh, the better compressed file sizes because that's all it's doing your CPU is making the file size com more compressed to send out to the internet the more compressed it is uh, the easier your connection has um, the less compressed, the harder the connection has, but if you have a good connection, it doesn't matter. And that's basically how that works. Um, now we're going to move to scene selection and all that stuff. Now you can make different scenes by hitting add scene, and then you can name it whatever you want, and you can switch by clicking between them. We're not going to do that for the sake of the fact that I'm recording. Alright, so next we're just going to add something to the scene. Let's, let's go ahead and add an image. We're going to add an overlay that I've made. It's a daisy overlay, blah blah blah. If you don't like daisy, it doesn't matter. All right, overlay daisy. Okay, let's go. Let's get hit. Okay. All right, now it's gonna appear like that. All right, now it's a PNG. You gotta remember the difference between PNG, GIF, and JPG. If you want full transparency, you want a PNG, um, portable network graphic, and that's what this is. It's giving me full transparency, and that's how you can see through the image um, to the other screen because it's on top of it. Now let's put it on the bottom. Alright, so it works like that. See, now if I wanted to add something as a JPG, let's go ahead and go on my Toshiba drive. Let's find. Okay, here. Now, if I add this on here, it's not see through, but yeah, you get the point, I assume. Let's go ahead and delete that. I just hit delete on my keyboard. Alright, now we move it up back up onto the scene. Now, say you wanted to add like a chat window in there, all you gotta do is window capture. Let's capture my DX3 window all right let's pull that open now if it as soon as it comes up it's locked unless you have edit scene enabled now I can edit it but when you go to move it it moves proportionally and obviously you don't want everything to move proportionally and if something is mo uh, moving proportionally just hold shift and then move it like that and now we're just gonna move it um, the way we want it now, if you if you start editing again like this, and you're not holding shift, it'll go back to proportion. So remember not to remember if you don't want it proportional, always be holding shift when you're editing it. Now that's pretty much what I consider good. Now I gotta do is move it down one, and now it's behind that, and it looks okay. So yeah, that's what that is. And all you gotta do is go through this and find out what capture device game capture will capture the game you're playing. Video capture will capture any video device that's recording or can record, such as a web camera, uh, DX3, FRAP, or we can't record FRAPs, but you understand my point. Text will allow you to add any sort of text of any form. Let me add my name. Um, and then there you go. You got, you got your little name there. See that? Isn't that unique? But as soon as you don't want to edit, the, as soon as you want to lock the scene, just click edit scene, and now I can't move anything. I can move stuff along the sources, but nothing from any of that. Anyway, that's been the OBS tutorial. If you would like to see a tutorial on video capturing without a video capture device, please click um, an annotation in the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to consider leaving this video a like and adding it to your favorites. And if you get a chance, go ahead and subscribe to our channel for future content. Thank you and have a great day.